bottom, let's create a point start. Say we want to calculate the midpoint between two points on the xy plane. In this example, we'll declare a point struct with just x and y coordinates, and we'll get practice initializing the struct and writing functions that use it, like midpoint. Let's go to Eclipse. You're welcome to follow along. OK, let's make a point project, new C project called point, hello world, and ZC project, and finish. And for my description, I'll say calculate the midpoint of two points. Clean things up a little bit. All right, so if I want to make the midpoint, I'm going to start off by declaring a point structure. So I'll do that using a type def. Remember, type def, and then what we actually want to define, so which is going to be our struct. And then after that, the new name for it, which is going to be point. Inside the curly braces go the fields of our struct. And in this case, we know that we just want x and y. So let's have x and y here. And we'll use floats rather than ints to make them a little bit more general. OK, so in main, if I want to deal with this point, then I need to start off by making those points. So I'll just make a point called P1. And let's assume that we have a function written that will do that. So I'm going to make a point, and we'll say with the coordinate 6, 10. And in order to test that function, I would need another function to print it just to show that it worked. So I'll have print point P1. Let's go ahead and write those functions. So we'll start with make point. Make point needs to actually create and return a point. So return type will be point. And I'm going to make it from two values, the x and the y coordinates. Within our function, we want to declare a point, fill it, and then return it. So I'm going to declare a point called p. I'm going to fill that with, with data. So I'll say that p's x field gets the x parameter. p's y field gets the y parameter. And then we return the point. Now you'll notice here that x was used in two different cases, right? But they don't conflict with each other. The x on the right is the parameter that was passed in. The one on the left here is part of the point, And we know that because it's p.x. So there's no conflict. All right, so there's our make. We said that we want to also write a print function to test it. Print point doesn't return anything, so it's void. And it's going to take a point as a parameter. And then in this, we'll just have a printf. And we'll get the formatting right once. And then we can call print point whenever we want to. So I'll have parentheses and the x and the y coordinates. I'll use format string here. So percent 0.2 float. And that'll give us two places after the decimal and where we're not specifying the total width of it. It'll grow to whatever it needs to be. That's what the zero is for. What two things do we want to print there? We want to print p.x and p.y. I'm not putting in a new line because I might want this point to be printed within a, a bigger line of output. All right, let's go ahead and run the program. And we can see that it does print out the point that we created. All right. Moving on, if I want to test my midpoint function, I want to call print point of and then midpoint of two points, P1 and a P2 that I'm going to make in a minute here. So I'll go back up and write point P2 equals make point 2, 7. Well, for this to run, I need to write the midpoint function. The midpoint of a point is itself a point. So this function will need to return a point, calling it midpoint. And we find the midpoint of two other points. So and call them P1 and P2. 
how do we find a midpoint? Well, we need to average the x's and average the y's. So I'm going to create the point that's going to be returned and call it mid. And mid's x coordinate gets the value that's the average of, of p1 and p2's x's. So p1 dot x plus p2 dot x. And I'll divide by 2 to get the average there, parentheses to get order of operations right. And do the same thing for y. So, so mid's y is equal to the average of p1's y and p2's y. And then return that midpoint. Okay, Let's test it. Okay. And all that I've done so far is, is printed the point and printed the midpoint. It's kind of hard to test, so let me go ahead here and also print p2 as well, run it again. So now we can see that the average of 6 and 2 is 4, and the average of 10 and 7 is 8.5. So that works fine. What if we wanted to be able to ask the user to enter the coordinates of each point when they run the program? You can try that. You can also watch us work a solution on another video. I hope you enjoy the example. Until next time, I'm Matt.